in this session, Nina and I will present um, uh, how you as an institution can discuss with the community that you have some functionality you need for your system, you need for your go live, and how the work being refined in dialogue with the community then can be handed over to a developer being developed and still will the community, you know, in direct in the loop, being informed, and this development happening over uh, kind of a uh, condensed uh, time period being released in one of the given uh, cloud releases. So I will start with Nina to send us up. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. So my name is Nina. I am working for Habis. For those not familiar with the structure, like Habis is one of the uh, library networks in Germany. I'm working in the like the headquarter of it. Usually those headquarters they provide like infrastructure or support or any kind of, like software to their libraries. And now we are in the place that Habis is going to migrate to Folio. So we are also like recording kind of there. And my focus generally is anything which comes to resource access circulation because I'm also having a background in this. And yeah, reminder fees actually belongs to that uh, section and it's been a pain point for us, but we made it. So yeah. thank you, Charlotte. Yeah. And my name is Charlotte Bridge. I am Will Index Data. I am a product owner and a project manager and account lead for European customers. Uh, and I've worked with folio development since uh, the very early beginning in 2016. Now, let's see if I can. So, for the German reminder piece, here we have, uh, I have put up a timeline and uh, just for you to give an impression on how is, um, you can say, the, the, sto the, the storyline for uh, doing such a project. And um, Habis and other German libraries came to the community, the resource access SIG, and uh, had um, uh, initial conversations where with Polymer's Power as the product owner uh, discussing uh, a famous feature called UH Prod 2015. And you discussed it uh, during uh, 2022, um, Holly Misselbauer started up uh, yeah, refining the feature and also started up writing uh, several of the underlying features to make this, uh, uh, Jira stories, to make this feature as step ready as possible. Then Holly Misselbauer uh, went on retirement and uh, maybe st still didn't have this functionality uh, and it was a road blocker. Um, maybe then reached out to index data and uh, we started to look at the requirements being written up by the community. And then in when we were you know getting closer to discuss okay what would be the task index data to do then um, Hibis uh, did uh, uh, the minimal requirements for Hibis to go live and so the work done by Holly mapped with the exact specifications from Hibis that was kind of that was our scope of this work. Um, um, the contract was then signed uh, in uh, April 23, and we started uh, work uh, together in a new team we called Odin uh, right away. Um, and, and again, all our work was uh, transparent in Folio Jira. Uh, everyone who was interested in what we developed could watch the events, could follow the progress, could follow what we were doing, comments in the tickets, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, during the process, we also uh, presented for the resource access SIG what we were working on. So development, so 
Uh, yeah, that was in the beginning of the year. And then uh, uh, we start the development uh, May 2023. And for 11 months, we had work uh, to do uh, regarding uh, polio reminder, the German reminder piece. Um, the open team was um, just uh, uh, three, and one, sometimes we were four developers involved, but we had um, two core developers. We had uh, Nelson with Nelson, and we had uh, Janis um, from uh, uh, a company, Index Data is contractable. Um, we built it, um, we, we made sure that the SMEs were always looped in very closely, and it was daily conversation we had. So I just here can mention that at first we targeted um, part of the work for Poppy. Poppy was then later extended. So then we could include more of the initial plan work into the extended Poppy, uh, we kind of called it. And then the final work was released in Christine. Okay. So from this overview, I want to like get back to where we started. Um, so as Charlotte mentioned, like in spring 2023, we stood in front of this UX Pro 2015, this big Jira with another bunch of Jiras on it. And uh, so for us, this whole, like for our Hibis team, this was has been like completely new way to work on a project. And so where do we start? So um, what we did first, um, we tried to figure out like this prioritization, like what do we absolutely need for our libraries to go live? Why can we work around? Like what, what, can, what can we do later? This resulted in what Charlotte mentioned, this like, let's call it mini, we called it minimal requirements because this was, is the one that was absolutely needed. So um, then we tried to find an order how to develop these minimum requirements. Of course, most the biggest part of, of this, I think, was the back end process because this is what it actually starts. We will get back to that later. It's like really an overnight process. And this is kind of invisible in FOIL. It's just the outcome of the process, which you will see at the end, which causes the reminder fees and the notices around it. So this was one of the biggest parts of it. And still, while we did this prioritization and figuring out how to do that, we always tried to balance what does our libraries need, like, an, of course, also are the German libraries, which need the, this, this functionality versus the requirements, which the other community, like the bigger for you community uh, already formulated in this lot of JIRAs. And still we had to, a strict time frame to keep for our goal life, which was um, the Q release. And as Charlotte mentioned, this like whole Big and, uh, back and forth with the releases sometimes is, let's say it was a little challenge, but we made it. <laughs> so, and I, at this point, before we get back to our project team, I want to highlight the role of the FOU community also in this project. So, Big shout out for the requirement description, which already was in place when we started with all these JIRAs. Yes, this has been a challenge, but it was extremely helpful. And um, when we started, we had a look at it. We did a structure for ourselves to know where to start and uh, also like rewriting and putting it in sections to know where, where to go. And we, as like the project team, we also did presentations, let's say, in our Hibis working group for circulation, then in the German resource access and 
in the resource access stick uh, uh, prior the releases uh, Poppy and Crismaya because the development was uh, like sectioned in these two for these two releases, and we each time we received like really important feedback. And uh, also from the councils, we will get back to that later because we had a module which was approved by the councils. Also, really important feedback. And uh, the project team, and we we prepared like for Quesnea and Poppy Bugfest, like the, the test race and everything, the preparations in the test system, and community contributed with tests. And so, thank you all. <laughs> So the Odin team uh, was formed and uh, is one of the, uh, we have a very long list of development teams by now uh, in the Folio Wiki, uh, but uh, um, here you see the names of uh, who was involved, the SMEs and the developers and uh, coming from uh, index data. Um, and this means quite from the headquarter and from the libraries. Um, so who was to implement as yeah. uh, first who was. Um, the OTIN team, uh, here we uh, quickly uh, figured out that it was, was um, uh, very useful to meet um, um, twice a month uh, because then we kind of had this continuing conversation. Um, we wrote down all deci decisions uh, to make sure that if you miss the meeting or something, that you could always go back to the meeting's notes and uh, get uh, the latest uh, update. Um, and those of you who also have worked with me on other projects, you know that <laughs> it's kind of the same way I'm, I'm doing these things. Um, <laughs> Uh, we set up a, a Slack channel for our team uh, and we used it, you know, we had a daily uh, back and forth and uh, in this case, because you are Europe uh, time zone and uh, Nils and I are in Europe time zone and Janis was as well, so then we, we yeah, could we easily yeah. work together. Um, um, and uh, we, we could also spin up a call if there was something we wanted to discuss because sometimes uh, having slacks back and forth, long thread, thread etc. 10 minutes call can, uh, you know, uh, solve everything uh, just like that instead. So, so it, yeah, it, it was almost like if we were one big uh, open land yeah. Uh, office. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, uh, uh, established also very quickly uh, a shared uh, index data and HEBIS test environment uh, in order to, um, uh, where um, HEBIS, you could set up your environment um, exactly with the use cases you want to have supported. You could set it up with circulation rules, you could set it up with uh, sample data, uh, users, and, uh, and also test how you wanted to have your uh, notices to look like. So it, it was kind of, it was your uh, test environment, but it was also the developer's environment where they pushed the code. Pushed the code even before it was uh, moved into a photo structure. And by having this possibility to for uh, the developers to push the code and then put in Slack, I have done this and that, Will you yeah. test that it looks like uh, what you expected, etc. And then the developers would get immediate, uh, very quick feedback. And the big win-win uh, is that uh, it is uh, so quick to capture if there's any misunderstanding or anything missing. And the developers, they still have this very new code in their head. So they do not need to, because three months later, two months later, then they need to more or less uh, revisit everything and uh, get back to that. But if you can catch them while they still have all these details in their head, it's much cheaper to fix what, uh, what eventually needed to be um, uh, fixed or uh, misunderstanding, corrected or something. Uh, and of course, uh, then after 
scope was um, we we were working in uh, code uh, in the circulation modules owned by uh, the EPAM team. Uh, Lars, Vega, Vega. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the code uh, has to be um, uh, reviewed by a uh, tech lead at Vega. Um, um, it took a little answer to get that flow working, <laughs> but, um, and again, by having that, um, you know, you can say the code owners will be, have insight in what we are doing and can review it, then it is also, uh, then they feel more good about what it is we are uh, developing in, in the modules they own. Um, and yeah, and then of course, code was merged into full snapshot, Code merge into the bug test environments eventually and being able to be part of the general test. Uh, in the OTIM team, we also did um, not just uh, meetings with the project team, but also we had um, a group we called the stakeholders. And uh, here was also the library director from Havis. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was again. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, it was good to have uh, the director who was the one who had signed the contract being in the loop on how did we spend our time, how was the progress, were we following the timeline, were we um, uh, doing some adjustments, etc., etc. And uh, um, it felt good to always. Be, have the stakeholders also in the loop and that we made sure that they felt confident that we spent the time and money the right way. And we were uh, going to achieve the end goal, uh, end goal so go live would um, uh, happen as, uh, as planned. <clears throat> Okay, so let's have a short look on the actual outcome of the development. Um, as I mentioned, this really, the biggest part is probably in the back end. Uh, so we're just going to show some screenshots. And um, so this right here is the new section on how you actually, uh, like the administration for the reminder fees. Um, this is can be found in the settings app, in the circulation section, and in the um, overview find policy. Sorry, this is the new section in the overview find policy, and um, they're actually like this is the configuration. Let's say like how many days or like let's say weeks after item is overdue, you want the first reminder fee to uh, occur. And you can like actually select the amount of the fee and the notice method, whether it's email or print, we get back to the print later. And in the notice template, um, so there are some other like adjustments, like if uh, you want to block renewals on items with the reminder, or if you want to send reminders on close dates. So this is all in the settings app. Um, so once a reminder fee is on a pattern, so let's say, first of all, this is the view how it looks like on a loan. So this is actually really, so start immediately, there is a reminder fee on this item. Um, this is what it looks like in the loan details. You can see it right here again, and even with the timestamp. So when the action of yours, then it says like exactly when the, so here it is actually right after the event. So this is what, this is not what we're doing in real life. So like we do, but not on um, every day, but uh, this is just for test reasons, of course. <laughs> and this is again, how it looks then on the fee fine details. This is uh, the action already is like, we will get back to the, it's the new fee fine type, which is called reminder fee. And uh, here it says it's the first one because you then in this interval, you can say there are like, I think we developed up to 50 kind of. Mm -hmm. So 
inhibits we usually use three. And this is a screenshot, like I filtered that from the circular from Bugfest. Uh, here you can actually say really clear, this is the checkout with the due date. And exactly on the next day, there is the first reminder, reminder P1, and with the P5. And at the same time where it is built, also notices that to the version. And then uh, each time again on another, the next days, and exactly how we configure it, like our test case, our real life case, it is three. So it's the next three days. Okay, this is another big thing. <laughs> So when uh, reminder fees were discussed back in 2022, uh, then uh, the whole notion of uh, doing the printed patron notices was not that uh, high on anyone's attention, uh, but it got very yeah. high when on with your yeah. minimal requirements. Uh, so um, uh, while working on this, then the developers realized that we simply had to do a new module uh, to, uh, you know, go in uh, one minute past mid midnight, run a job, and uh, then uh, run this job in batch for all um, reminder piece, which would be up the same day, and then have that uh, catched uh, um, in uh, uh, this module so we could produce a PDF for easy print. Because the workflow is that a staff is coming in the same morning and will go in and then uh, uh, click. Uh, this is uh, all the produced reminder piece which are up for print that same day. Um, uh, it was a little late in the process uh, that we understood we had to do this uh, new module. And we also understood that we need to then go back and get the PCs approval uh, because it has some implications. Uh, the uh, staff who is to print uh, these files are going into, and uh, um, it is uh, now located in the users app, go in and print, um, uh, select this print job. So it has some UI implications. So the PC approved the module uh, 27 January this year. And in the meantime, we had also already started the TC approval process. Um, and there's a, a long uh, list of um, uh, requirements in, in order for getting a new module evaluated and accepted by the Technical Council. But uh, my batch print, um, which lives in the family of uh, my sender, um, uh, my uh, email, and my notify, um, that uh, part of the code uh, in folio, um, but we got the approval uh, on um, uh, February 26th. So just a short look on how this looks. I mean, this is like also kind of really quite new to do this batch. Like, first of all, it's a batch safe in the night and then a batch print in the morning for the patch, uh, for, for the library stuff to do. And um, so this now, it's not really like, I cannot show it like that. But this is a drop down in the, you can like this list. It is accessible via the action menu in the users app. There is a new uh, section which says like view the print jobs, and this right here is a list of all the the print jobs gathered, which are like now one every night, uh, ordered by uh, date, with the most recent one on the top, and. If library staff has the has the, the permissions according, then it is also possible from here, like to delete after time. And these are PDFs. And I'm sorry, I didn't take a good screenshot here. Usually, like 
our, let's say, libraries, so usually Hebus libraries, it is common that the third, the last reminder is a printed one because there are like some legal information on this letter. And so usually for each, let's say, letter to print out, it would be a new PDF right here. Here it's just for a test system, it's just one. But from here, you can actually download it, save it to another place, or print it out directly and on and all, and then library stuff goes on with the processing. Maybe we could mention that uh, it can be hundreds of yeah, uh, it is. notification in one PDF. Yeah. So it's easy for us that it's not going click hundred times, one file, print, done. So when we all that developed and developed work released with the media release, after that, the project team, we did a project evaluation uh, with this retrospective, with the easy record board. I just actually learned that this is also used to wrap up the travel releases. So it was good to get to know that. And so we sat together and talked about what went well, what can we do better the next time, where is improvement, but the end is like we said it really was a good collaboration, and this one was a good place to, yeah, to evaluate that. Um, let's have a short recap on how the project went. And um, so the work in our project team, our Odin team, it was, I would say, it was a really good collaborative and productive teamwork. So at the end, when we did the retrospective I just mentioned, I literally said that was fun. <laughs> so, and the, as said, the structured and regular meetings, they were really helpful, especially also like the, sometimes even the spontaneous communication was absolutely necessary in between these meetings. Uh, when something urgent came up, that was really good to have this flexibility. And the same when it comes to the communication, it was really like clear and direct and on time. And really also that for, from what I felt like on one level, it's not like this. It has been this like vendor customer, just like we were like such a good team. <laughs> so, and we, uh, I think we also found a good way to balance what we, like we in, let's say, the libraries, Hebes, German, general, like the whole for you libraries, versus uh, what actually can be done in for you. Besides, of course, the time, but <laughs> what we got, I think it really is a really good outcome. So, yeah, we had. For us, as subject matter experts and testers, it really was like also, yeah, we learned a lot. We didn't uh, do that before and we learned really a lot. And especially helpful here was our own test environment. So it was, we could test immediately. And that was also in combination with all that, that we had this communication on time. So it was like back and forth and like sometimes really fast. And uh, so we could prevent losing time because we didn't see what is actually developed. So here we could do that. And this is like absolutely, I would say recommendable. <laughs> so, and what also went very well from my perspective is the way the team adapted to the changing requirements like when charlotte said we just found in the middle of the development process that there is something missing but which is absolutely absolutely needed we still found a way to get it in uh, and the time frame so it was strict but uh, and also then changing with the the release like hobby was extended and then Kursnaya was uh, postponed as well a bit, but I think I'd say it was it was good. We learned a lot. <laughs> so, 
there's also some weaknesses. Um, and, and one of the uh, primary uh, weaknesses, I would say, was that uh, uh, I was not uh, shadowing or following uh, all these conversations Holly had in 2022 with uh, the resource accessing. So I was very green and very new to all of this um, when I was presented for it first, when Mike Rell came and say, uh, we are talking with Habis and you are uh, uh, probably gonna be the PO for uh, helping Habis to, uh, doing that. So then I had to do my, it was a learning curve for me. Um, also, uh, uh, in 2022, and that's probably because Holly was planning to do the work herself, but she had put in uh, many of the JIRAs in modules where that code did not belong. So then uh, it was a little bit confusing for new PO, new developer to actually understand where in the code to look. So that's, but we are always learning. And I would also say the open developers, none of them had worked in circulation modules at all. So it was a brutal learning curve. Um, and uh, for uh, next time, I think uh, when our developers are to work in areas of folio code where we have not developed before, um, it will be really helpful if the owning uh, development team, so in this case, Vega, could give a short introduction uh, and we were just talking about uh, uh, an hour or so then, because the developer speaks developer language, <laughs> so they easily understand each other, but point them in the right areas of the code, then uh, we can all uh, yeah, get a, a faster uh, start. Um, yes. So I think that's that. Um, yeah, to, so to sum that up, um, so this actually, this project and the development, it actually proves that like the concept, like the libraries, they have a requirement and yes, have the resources. It is possible to get this requirement into Folio. It's just at the beginning, probably people don't know how to do it, but to be open, and it works. So, um, <laughs> so crucial, of course, all the time has been the collaboration with the community. This feedback has been absolutely important. And by that, even like this is a big requirement has, let's say, has been, it still is uh, because there is room for improvement, but it has been a big requirement for German libraries and especially Hebrew libraries. While it is important for us. It still is a contribution to the folio community. And uh, since we got the, the code in there and it is included in all the flower releases and will be. So, and yeah, but mentioned this, like there is still room for improvement. And when I said we didn't, we did have a strict timeline. We had this prioritization we had to do. So, which means there is still, enhancements which need to do you can also saw that when i showed this showed the screenshots there's the great out uh, areas which uh, we didn't like let's say because there are kind of workarounds that's why we didn't unfortunately make that but let's keep it as dynamic as for you is and there is another jira where another connection of another jira so for later <laughs> Okay, so I think for now, any questions or things you would like to comment on or mention? Anything in the chat? Not currently. Okay. <laughs> oh, it might be. Yes. yes, thank you both. That's a great presentation. Um, uh, Lee from EBSCO presented yesterday on how EBSCO's development team, because okay. the EBS teams work a little bit. I, I really liked what you shared about working with the Vega team and, the, you know, some of the challenges there. And um, one of the things we were talking about yesterday was making it easier for these sorts of cross-team collaborations to work, right? And to encourage more community involvement, even yeah. in existing mm -hmm. modules. 
-hmm. So you mentioned one suggestion of like a one hour training session. Yeah. But I guess I'm asking beyond that, like what would the ideal be of how your team would have worked on something that the Vega team owned? What is that gap? What other things might be done to have made that process easier to work with their team on that? You know. So uh, I'd say if the index data uh, developers was only to do, um, uh, you know, one little part in the uh, circulation modules, uh, then uh, I think uh, what we suggest is all fine. But if we are to do more things, bigger things or something, then uh, it would be um, great with, you know, uh, some collaboration and the tech leads from both team kind of had a, uh, you know, uh, a, a dialogue and, uh, and and being. I will also say that the uh, team leads were in a bit in the beginning a bit suspicious about. Okay, what are they <laughs> fiddling with? What are they doing? But I also could see that um, it was quicker and quicker that we got the response. Okay, uh, yeah, approved uh, release and uh, you know so. Um, so it is about developers are always a little. Uh, uh, is this newcomer, new guy here? Is he any good? So, uh, but but yeah, uh, the more uh, uh, we get together and know each other, then there will also be a confidence that this is actually a, a good developer. He can his stuff. He is being, uh, 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 yeah, he is in all the details. Thank you. Okay, a lot of hands. I, I think Jana was first, and then uh, Julie. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, at first I would say thank you for what I love in this feature because as German, as a part of the German consortium that has to only like this and need this feature, <laughs> I'm so thankful. Um, um, so, and what I want to point out is especially how you dealt with the community. I find it really, really, really great. Um, it was not only the German community, also North, but also the international one. So that other people from other countries, not only Germany, <laughs> could maybe benefit from that and understand the feature. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for this. And I hope that we could, uh, this could be a model for a future as I want this one. Thank, thank you. you so much. So I'll, I'll just add on to that and confirm as well from Bavaria. Thank you. Um, we unfortunately lost that, but that's okay. This is a good, great start. And but also just the example to show that, um, like working with the community, it's not just an annoying extra thing with opinions that we may mm -hmm. believe aren't, aren't um, necessary for the development, but it, we need the collaboration and just hearing, you know, different opinions and people asking questions and having to explain this can always help. My question is towards uh, Nina. Um, are there any lessons learned or things that you could, you know, share for you having to do all this in English? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> first of all, I mean, um, for me personally, it was not a big problem. So I, I felt, uh, I, from private background, I felt really confident. So uh, that's also when I joined the project in general, it was not, not, not a big deal for me, kind of. So, but I definitely can imagine for like people not maybe not that, let's say, confident with their English, it would be, um, well, but I mean, like, Child, you guys, you are all from Sweden. Like, yeah. you, we also we speak not different yeah, but it's just to, but I mean, I mean, from the hemisphere's perspective as well, like not even just you, sorry, not just you as a person, mm. but the, 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 the customer in this case, so I'm okay. German, and I know that you as Hibis have done the yeah. work, yeah. but it is yeah. for the German local library. So how, you know, not just the, the talking with, with the deputy, yeah. but the whole, the, at the end of the day, it yeah. also has to be in German. Yeah, well, of course, we had, uh, like, our German conversations on the side, besides with the development team, uh, just to prevent, like, and also, of course, we sometimes had, like, little misunderstandings, or not just because of the language, also because of the subject matter. So it's just, like, because this is, like, especially the way we do it, it's, like, for people maybe not so easy to understand, uh, and why do we do it like that? Um, but so 
I would say, I would say what is important, you better ask a third time, if not a fourth time, if it's not clear, okay? So it doesn't look stupid, just ask. So, And when you talk about a thing, like more than once, it's okay. It's just before it goes wrong, you just go for it. So that's that's what I would say. Okay, Chris? Yeah, this was a, a great uh, layout of the process working with like a network of libraries. Is there any difference um, for if an individual library wants to push something forward? Then I maybe can say no, because we right now we are working with in sharing and uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, Magnus probably can see that it is very much the same model we are following uh, because we we have and, and, and yeah, uh, I think um, uh, that form is also what the, our developers are kind of used to. And so we, yeah, we, we continue and then of course, we probably slightly re refine it, uh, but, but yeah, it's so for the floating collection, we are also um, uh, presenting for the resource access set, uh, informing about what we are uh, doing and uh, uh, yeah, uh, both use cases, uh, diagrams, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we, we have a model right now. It maybe looks other different uh, in a couple of years or so, but, but we have a, a way to do it. I think we, we other questions? No? Okay. Well, thank you so much. And so, and if you want to know a bit more about the background and how it looks in for you, so you might probably attend this shared short session we are going to have right away after that one. Thank you. Thank you.